Well, shalom everybody and welcome to this series looking at the Kitzur Shulchan Oruk. We are up to Saman Hay, which is Saman 5. And uh, the title of this Saman and the, the subject that it looks into, um, well, the, the heading here is quite wordy. I don't know how I'm going to fit this on the thumbnail, but I'll do my best. It says, laws pertaining to the required state of cleanliness for a place in which one engages in sacred matters. And I said that all in one breath. And the subheaders in the Safim that this particular Saman is made up of, which is 17 in total, is of course an introduction. What is considered filth? The area affected by the presence of filth, places that are considered to be in the presence of filth, and the laws of Erva, which is um, engaging in sacred matters uh, in the vicinity of nakedness, uh, pretty much. And that makes up 15 through 17 of the Safim of this Saman. Um, so it's going to be an interesting subject and I've already gone through and had a bit of a review and uh, let's just say that um, you'll, be hard, you'll be hard pressed finding uh, a Torah related channel looking at subjects that are similar to what we're about to get into now. So uh, well done for clicking on this. Uh, you, are, you are going to um, be challenged. Uh, by some of the things that you'll read um, and shocked. Um, yeah, well, let's get into it. Number one, it is written in Devarim 23, verses 14 through 15, When you sit outside, I relieve yourself, and you shall dig, and you shall cover your excrement. For Hashem your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp, etc., so your camp shall be holy, so that he will not see sh a shameful thing among you and turn away, etc. And that's... Referring to on the in the footnote, it says this verse concludes this ver these verses conclude the laws pertaining to the state of cleanliness, both physical and spiritual, in the Jewish camp uh, that a Jewish camp must maintain when waging war on their enemies. The sages of blessed memory derive from these verses that in any place that Hashem our Elim walks in our midst, that is when we are engaged in sacred matters such as reciting the Shema, praying, studying Torah, and the like, the camp, i.e. one's immediate area, where he's engaged in these matters, must be holy. Now, there, should be, there should not be any exposed excrement there, and there should not be any shameful thing visible, that is, any nakedness, uh, facing a person who is reciting the Shema or praying. Safe two. There are two ways to counteract the effect of the presence of filth without removing it from the area, uh, one applies to both excrement and urine, and one to urine alone, even for one to think sacred matters, e.g. thinking Torah thoughts, in a place where there is excrement or urine, or anything that emits a foul odor, is forbidden until he covers it, as the verse states in Devarim 23.14, and you shall cover your excrement. Uh, and the footnote reads, we learn from this verse that although the filth is still within the camp, i.e. in the person's vicinity, it is permitted to engage in sacred matters there as long as the filth is covered and cannot... Uh, and he cannot smell any foul odor. Um, we can see by this that um, in times past, and even in current day, uh, if a, a, a from Jew was thrown into a, a, a jail, uh, a small cell uh, with other occupants, and they just have one sort of can to, to do their thing in, uh, and there's, there's nothing that they can use to cover it, this would be quite uh, a difficult scenario for uh, an, an Orthodox Jew who was thrown into prison uh, because according to the Halakha, they, they're not able to um, to pray if they're within the vicinity of excrement or, or the, the odor. Um, and so there is an actual story uh, about two Jews that were, were very upset, not because they were in prison, but because they were in prison and they were near uh, a little can uh, which had excrement in it, and it was, and and they weren't able to think Torah matters or pray, and so they began to weep and cry, and then I don't know if it was a third Jew or they they themselves realized that by observing the mitzvah, not praying uh, the mincha prayer, because I think it came time for mincha prayer, um, they were actually performing a mitzvah that they had never performed before, and they both became very joyous about this and and stirred up quite a ruckus in the cell causing the wardens to take away uh, their little bucket as punishment. And because and their bucket got taken away, they could now they're now eligible to actually pray. 
And so they were even more excited. So they got two mitzvahs for the price of one sort of thing. So it was, it's an interesting little story. Uh, and so I'm just giving you this so it gives you some sort of context of how this situation can occur because a lot of us live in homes, you know, where the toilets are far away from uh, other rooms and things like that. Um, or with regard to urine, uh, he may engage in sacred matters in his presence after putting a revise of water into the urine of one discharge and a one revise, revise is one and a half eggs uh, worth of water uh, per one person's urine. Um, mm, 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 it will, it makes no difference whether the urine was in the receptacle first or then water was added or whether the water was in the receptacle first. Either way, the water is Affected, effective. However, if the urine was in a designated receptacle such as a urinal, diluting it with water does not affect this permit, as will be explained below in Safe 13. To negate urine that came from two acts of urination, two revies or reviot of water are required, and so on. Even if the urine was absorbed in the ground or in a cloth. As long as there is still some moisture from the urine, he must pour water there before engaging in sacred matters. Uh, see also below 8032. Regarding the implication of this halakha on Shabbos when laundering is prohibited. Uh, yeah, so there's obviously additional implications there if it is on Shabbat. Uh, okay, so save three. If there is excrement on one's skin, even though it is covered with his clothing, he is prohibited from engaging in sacred matters. As the verse states in Tehillim 35.10, All my limbs will say, Hashem, who is like you. This verse requires that all of his limbs must be clean when praising Hashem. So, by proxy, that is confessing that when we come before Hashem and David and pray, that not only just our mind and our mouth, uh, and maybe some of our limbs should be engaged in the act, but our entire body should be engaged in the act of prayer, at the same degree. Uh, there, are authority, there are authorities who are lenient with regard to this requirement, um, but it is proper to behave stringently. In cases of pressing need, uh, one can rely on the lenient opinion according to uh, Mishnah Barah 7614. And obviously there are circumstances that may vary. Um, yeah, somebody who's Hashem Shalom, you know, concentration camp. Maybe they've been ushered into a shower room or something, and, and there's a lot of nakedness. You know, of course, one can pray. Um, so there's, there's various circumstances that that can arise that that mitigate these stringencies. We have to always be aware of that. However, if he has ever, uh, however, if he has even a small amount of excrement in the rectum, even though it is covered, according to all authorities, the fact that he is covered does not help. Because in its place, the rectum is considered especially vile. Um, 17, this is footnote 17. This does not include excrement that is in the anal canal, but only that which has left the body to the point that it is visible when one is in a sitting position, according to Mishnah Barah 7619. Uh, regarding one who is uh, afflicted with hemorrhoids, uh, see Magan Avraham 76.8, who cites a responsum of the Red Vaz about this case, uh, which is in volume 3, 315 of the responsa. Uh, in our edition, the responsum is found in volume 1. Uh, note that in the conclusion of the comments of Magan Avraham, uh, regarding one whose discharge of blood is consistent, indicating the blood is coming from the rectum, uh, where it is written, he has no remedy. It is a copious mistake, and one should read, he has no need for a remedy. Okay, so wow, that's a, that's correcting a, a typo there. Um, okay, so blood is different, obviously, from excrement. And if one has uh, a hemorrhoid and there's, there's a discharge of blood, um, it doesn't fall under the same parameters as if it is excrement. Uh, care must be taken in any place where there is reason to suppose that perhaps there is excrement or urine there. 
that one should not recite any sacred matters there until he inspects the area. 23, Shulchan Aruch 76.7, that when one is unsure of if there is a standing urine in a room, presumably if he is unable to check it, he may nevertheless pray since the prohibition against not engaging in sacred matters when urine is present is only rabbinic in origin. See above note 8. One should not pray on the ground level of the ground level of a building if there is a place of filth in the upper level. Pre Megidem, pre Magadem, pre Magadem Siman 154, Mish Betzot 1. Say a five. The ex the excrement the excrement of a young child which is not malodorous which is not malodorous is not included in this prohibition. The, ex the excrement of a very young child, which is not malodorous, is not included in this prohibition. When an infant reaches the age when other infants of that age are capable of eating a kitsiot of one of the five species of grain, even if only in a cooked dish, in the time frame that an adult could eat half a loaf of bread, uh, in the safe Migdal Oz by Goan Rav uh, Yaakov Emden Ben Svi, may, may his memory be blessed. It is written uh, that this stage is reached when a child becomes one year old. One must distance himself when engaging in sacred matters from the child's excrement and from his urine. However, it is good and worthy practice to distance oneself even from the excrement of an eight day old infant. Save six human excrement, even if it does not emit foul odor, and likewise the excrement of a cat. And of a, a Nemea, which is a, a Nemea is a type of cat according to a small animal resembling a cat. Uh, some identify this animal as a, um, a Martin, which is a weasel like creature. See Rashi uh, to Kulin, uh, Tractate Kulin 52b. Uh, and the excrement of a Tonegol, Tonegol Aduma, sorry, a Tonegol Adumi, also known as. English, uh, Hina, and an Indic, and an Indic, uh, one must distance himself from them uh, before engaging in sacred matters, and that is a type of fowl similar to a chicken or a turkey. Uh, one must distance himself from them. Yeah, okay. The next point: the excrement of other animals, beasts, and birds generally do not emit a foul odor, and one need not distance himself from them. However, in the event that they do emit a foul odor, and likewise with regard to the carcass that emits a foul odor or anything that emits a foul odor due to decay and likewise with regard to a chicken coop one must distance himself from them likewise one must distance himself from a uh, malodorous uh, waters uh, steeping waters in which flux or hemp is soaked generally uh, generally emit a foul odor and one must distance himself from them as he would from excrement save seven excrement which is dry that uh, that it uh, that rolling it causes it to crumble no longer retains the psychic status of excrement but is considered to be like dust as long as it does not emit a foul odor however if it has no odor because it froze due to the cold since it can still return to its original state when warm weather comes it still remains in its status of excrement uh, excrement that was covered with snow has the status of covered excrement see above safe two uh, say if eight, uh, how far must one distance, distance himself from excrement for him to be permitted to engage in sacred matters? If the excrement was behind him, he must distance himself four amos, two and a half meters, I think, from the place where the odor can no longer be detected. And this applies even for one who does not smell the odor. Uh, he must distance himself uh, the required amount as if it were as if he were able to smell it if the excrement does not emit a foul odor it is sufficient for him to distance himself for amos from the excrement itself if the excrement was in front of him uh, he must distance himself as far as his eyes can see i until he cannot see it anymore even at night when he cannot see he must distance himself from the excrement the amount of space that he would that he would be required to distance himself if it were able, if he were able to see it during the day, if the excrement is to either side, 
one should be stringent and consider it as if it is in front of him and turn himself so that he should be positioned so that it should be positioned behind him safe nine regarding a room in which the congregation was praying an excrement was found there and even if it is behind the chazan that is the cantor the and further for a moss from the place from which the odor is no longer detected nevertheless he must wait silently until it is taken out or covered because in a congregational setting it is not possible that there will not be at least one person in the congregation who will be within four amos from the place from which the odor can no longer be detected and that person would then be prohibited from listening and following along with the with the prayers that the chazan was reciting um we'll look at this last safe before we finish and that'll get us about just over halfway through uh one who prayed and later found that there had been excrement in the place that he prayed if that place was one where he, it was reasonable to suspect that perhaps an excrement would be found there and he was negligent and did not check the area before uh, praying. Uh, since the Shemona Esra prayer is in the place of sacrifice, the rule that relates to sacrifices applies. The offering of the wicked is an abomination, according to Mishlei 21.7, and it is not accepted by Hashem. Accordingly, a prayer recited improperly out of neg negligence is not accepted, and he must therefore repeat the Shemona Esra prayer. So it's basically saying, you know, if you didn't, um, pay enough attention to your surroundings uh, before you engage in active prayer, then that has a that has a reflection on the the value that you have in your prayers, because you are not looking to pull out a gem in a in a place that's clean. Um, you're 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 bringing out a gem in a in a filthy place because you haven't you know if anybody has anything physical of any like a, a material object of any value and they want to pull it out and show somebody um, or engage with it in somehow they, they want to pull it out in a place that's clean they don't want to get it dirty or anything like that um, so it's the same same sort of principle here so you know you're not really taking much effort to to find a place that's appropriate for you to pray so straight away that has a bearing on how much you value prayer and then the prayer is is turn back on you and is is, is um, seen as an abomination according to Mishlei 2127. Uh, heaven forbid. Accordingly, a prayer recited improperly out of negligence is not accepted. I just read that. And he must therefore repeat the Shema Nesrei prayer. I just read that. Okay, likewise, with respect to the recitation of the Shema, which is a biblical obligation, he does not entail a question of reciting blessing in vain. 42. Since the Shema itself does not contain any blessings footnote for that he must repeat the recitation of shema if excrement was found uh this is in accordance with the rule of uh, any case of doubt as to the existence of biblical obligation must be treated stringently uh but without the accompanying blessings such as the avodah rabbah or havat uh, olam uh, the same applies also with regard to all other blessings that are recited there where excrement was found even Brokot Amazon, that is the blessing after meals, he does not recite again. If, however, it was a place where there is no reason to suspect that there was would be excrement there, in which case he was not uh, negligent in prayer there, uh, then even with the respect to prayer, he has fulfilled his obligation after the fact. And of course, you know, he has no reason to suspect. Not not all of us, where we go to a place where I'm familiar with the prayer, we're going to be looking for excrement. Um, but depending where we might go uh, with the limited options available to us we're, for you know an alley part of an alley is the best place we've got to heaven forbid we've got to choose then of, of course we're going to have a quick look around uh if urine was found in the place where he prayed even if the place was one in which there was reason to suspect that urine would be found there he has fulfilled his obligation after the fact even with respect to prayer and we will leave it there picking up in safe 11 of saman 5 uh, next time around a uh, lot of information in this saman uh, thank you so much for joining me it's a i know it's a, it's what are we talking about here it's it's such a, a topic that i'm sure you probably haven't heard um, anybody sort of broach before uh, unless it's sort of uh, maybe a, a rabbinic teaching or something like that uh, but thank you so much for joining me and i hope you're you're getting a lot out of uh, this series i certainly am and i'm this is my second or third time I've been going through the, the Kitsushuk and Oruk, um, so you can always learn something new each time. Anyway, bye for now. See ya.